Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend, presents... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. Stacy, I'm like everyone else, just recovering from the mad excitement of the holiday season. The excitement part is something we all go through, but the madness comes in only when you live with my friend Irma. <laughs> now, please understand me, Irma Peterson is a wonderful girl. And without her, our little apartment on West 73rd Street would be, well, it wouldn't be the same. For instance, the other night I started to take down our Christmas tree, and Irma said... Oh, please don't take the Christmas tree down, Jane. I've been watering it all day. <laughs> Maybe it'll grow. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> well, right now, Irma is sitting at the table doing her homework. Now, by homework, I mean that Irma is a stenographer, and every night she has to come home and try to decipher the dictation she took during the day. <laughs> Now, there are two known systems of shorthand, Pittman and Gregg. To this has been added the unknown. <laughs> That's the Irma Peterson system. <laughs> Such markings have never been found on the inside of an Egyptian tomb. <laughs> so I'm trying to help her. Irma. Yes, Jane? Now, honey, we figured out one page. Now, uh, what's this you've written here? Dear Sir... As your attorney, I wish to advise you that you must pay X. Regret 12 missing bottles. Oh, it's simple, Jane. What's the X for? Expenses. Oh, yeah. Well, that's pretty close. What is regret 12 bottles missing? Oh, I don't know shorthand for we lost the case. Oh. <laughs> I think you better take it from here, honey. All right, Jane. Gee, sometimes I get so fed up with being a stenographer. Oh, honey, that's perfectly normal. Most people would like to change jobs. But you must remember the grass always looks greener in the other fellow's yard. That's silly. I wouldn't give up stenography to become a gardener. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, Jane, what's the use? There's no escape. Well, there's always marriage. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. If you marry Al, you'll just be working under a different name. <laughs> you know something, honey? You take the wrong approach to work. Oh, it's all the same. I've tried the Fifth Avenue bus, the Sixth Avenue no, bus. No, no, no. No, honey, that's not what I mean. Now, listen, Irma, you, you, you see, you're, you're just an average girl, just, just like millions of other girls in New York, and, and you're lucky you've got a good job. Now, don't have delusions of grandeur, honey. But, Jane, are you satisfied with being a secretary? Well, I happen to know that a working girl's only escape is marriage. So I'm content to work, sit, and wait, and wait, and wait. Well, if you get tired of waiting, what do you do, Jane? You pull your hair, and then you wait, and wait, and wait. Well, Jane, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to quit my job the first chance I get. Now, listen, sweetie. If Come it... in. Only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little electric currents. One a live wire, the other a short circuit. <laughs> Why, Professor? Oh, excuse me, a little joke I picked up in the electric store. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, I just came down to borrow some smelling salts. Why? Who fainted? Mrs. O'Reilly. I gave her the rent. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, Professor. Did you get a raise? No, I got a better job. I quit the Gypsy Tea Room. I am now playing first fiddle at the Bijou Theater. Oh, Professor, that's wonderful. What's so wonderful about it? 
a broken down theater, a bunch of hula hula girls is running around wearing practically nothing, and I am sitting behind the bass drummer, I can't see anything. <laughs> Only from the expression on the saxophone player's face do I know what's going on. Oh, but in a real theater, it's so glamorous. You call this glamour? <laughs> Irma, in the old country, Kropotkin was considered an artist. I remember as a little boy, people from miles around would come through snow and slush and stand there shivering, waiting. To hear you play? No, my father sold firewood. <laughs> But even then, I loved music, and I kept on. And what is the result? Today, I'm at the Bijou. Well, gee, Professor, I envy you having a glamorous job while I'm just a stenographer. You know, I'm thinking of changing my job. Oh, Professor, Irma refuses to listen to me. Will you give her a little advice? Gladly. Irma, my pigeon, listen to me. Be satisfied. All that glitters is not gold. I know that, Professor. How do you know? I had the watch Al gave me appraised. <laughs> no, darling, listen. What I mean is there's a very old saying, look before you leap. But what has that got to do with it? Nothing. This is a saying for broad jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye and good luck. I'm on my way to the Bijou. You see, Jane, the professor's changing his job. Why can't I? Well, now, honey, the professor happens to be a talented musician. What besides a secretary could you be? Well, I could be a model. Al says I have nice legs. Oh, I know you have, honey. You know, I got them from my mother. What? <laughs> oh, they're not my mother's legs. They're mine. Mother has her own. <laughs> yes, yes, naturally. Honey, I think you better stay just where you are and count your blessings. Uh, you come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, chicken. Oh, hello, Al, honey. Oh, are those new shoes? Yeah, made a restaurant buy them for me. They ruined my old ones. Well, how, Al? Stupid way to stumble and drop soup on them. You couldn't wear the old ones because soup fell on them? Yeah, it shrank all the newspapers in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> how do I look, chicken? Oh, awfully cute, Al. Feel good, too. Right in the mood to swing the big deal I'm working on. Oh, no. Not another deal. What is it this time, Al? Putting stilts on mushrooms and selling them for end tables? <laughs> Nothing so wild. This one can't miss. Putting Mexican jumping beans in pancake flour so they'll turn over by themselves. <laughs> Gee, Jane, isn't Al wonderful? I know he's going to come out on top. Yeah, well, I better leave before I blow mine. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Super sensitive Jane. Gee, Al, I'm so glad you came over. I've been feeling so depressed. Oh, what's depressing you, chicken? Oh, work. The word depresses me, too. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, I'm so tired of my job. It's, it's so monotonous. Well, it's just temporary. After we're married, we'll go on our honeymoon. Then when we come back, you can look for something else. <laughs> no, Al, it's getting on my nerves. Typing for hours and then forgetting to put the paper in. <laughs> Mailing empty envelopes and then having to mail a postcard saying letter will follow. <laughs> oh, Al, I'm a nervous wreck. Hello? Who is it? Oh, Professor Kropotkin. Well, anything wrong? Huh? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, I certainly will right away. Goodbye. What's up, chicken? Well, the professor broke his bow at rehearsal, and he wants me to pick up another bow in his room and bring it backstage at the theater. Oh, anything for the professor, chicken. Uh, shall we take a trolley? Wait, I'll toss a coin. All right, Al, where's the coin? Uh, chicken, I think we'll have to walk. <laughs> okay, Al, it's only 35 blocks. <laughs> Okay, chicken, here's the stage entrance. Gee, Al, this is the first time I've ever been backstage. Gee, I'm so excited. What a life it must be. And I have to be stuck with an old stenography job. Well, that's life, chicken. Forget it. Now go in and give the professor his bow. I'll, I'll wait out here. 
Where do you think you're going, sister? I'm looking for Professor Kropotkin. I want to give him his bow. Shh, not so loud. The show's on. It is? Yeah, the great Cardoni, the magician, is doing his act. Oh, do you mind if I watch? No, no. Come over here and peek out of the wings. Gee, he's not very talented. Huh? What are you talking about? He's thrown 15 knives at the girl and he hasn't hit her once. <laughs> Quiet, sister. They're coming off. I've got to bring up the house lights. Now, listen here, Pauline. How many times must I tell you not to scratch your back on my knives in the middle of the act? It don't look classy. Now, look, Cardoni, I'm sick and tired of your griping, and I don't like the whole routine. <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm quitting. You ain't quitting. You're fired. Get out of here. Hey, Cardoni. What are you going to do for tomorrow night? Who needs her? I'm the act. Yeah, but who are you going to saw in half tomorrow night? Ain't important who I saw in half. Anybody can do it just as long as she thinks fast. Pardon me, but would you give this bow to Professor Kapotkin? Oh, hello, girlie. Who are you with? Oh, I'm not with an act. I'm a stenographer, but I hate it. Well, say, how would you like to be in show business? Oh, I'd love it, but, but, but I don't sing or dance. Oh, you don't have to sing or dance. I just want you to let me saw you in half. Saw me in half? Uh, no, thank you. What's wrong? I'd like something more permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, girlie, I don't really saw you in half. It's a trick. You get 50 bucks a week in expenses. Think of the glamour. Think of the lights. Ain't every dame that can be sawed in half by the great Cardoni. Well, I don't Look, know... Look, why don't you come tomorrow night and see how you like it? All right. Hey, yeah. you think the kid will be all right? Oh, sure, Pop. I'll break her in. She'll be great. See you tomorrow at 7, sister. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, here, will you give this bow to Professor Kapotkin? I want to tell my boyfriend I'm in show business. Oh, Al, Al. What's the matter, chicken? Oh, a wonderful thing has happened. Hey, what is it? Al, do you love me? Well, of course I do. Would you still love me if there were two of me? <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm in show business. Tomorrow I'm going to be sawed in half. What do you mean, chicken? Well, I just got a job with the great Cardoni. Is this on the level? Yes, I get $50 a week in expenses. That's a pretty high level. Oh, do you approve, Al? Approve? Why, certainly I approve. I never wanted you to keep that stenography job working for that lawyer, Clyde. From now on, chicken, you're on your own. You're going to work for me. I'm going to be your manager. My manager? Right, chicken. And believe me, this is only the start. First, they saw you in half. Then if you show any ability, they throw knives at you. And then if you really got the stuff, they shoot you out of a cannon. And a star is born. And now, Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice, says Susie, when you are buying soap for dishes, please be choosy. Swan gives a brand new kind of suds, you see. Your dishes wash so easily. Swan's gentle, too. I swan to you, says Susie. Yes, ladies, it's true. Swan's exclusive super creamed blend really does give you a wonderful new kind of suds for dishes. A new kind of suds that save you hours in the kitchen. You see, Swan's new kind of suds whip up faster in the dishpan, then rinse away in a twinkling. All you need is one quick hot rinse and even glasses sparkle without drying. And Swan's new kind of suds are mild as well as fast. Swan's super creamed blend protects your lovely hands, leaves them soft and smooth as ever. So now you can do a quick dishwashing job without strong soaps or strong soap powders that make your hands all red and unattractive. Remember, you get both speed and mildness with Swan soap. Because only Swan has this exclusive super creamed blend. Well, I don't know what happened last night, but Irma is certainly acting strange this morning. She's standing in front of the mirror making faces. She's laughing. <laughs> now she's crying. <laughs> Now she's singing. Give my regards to Broadway. Now she's trying to jump over one leg. She didn't make it. 
<laughs> Irma, what in the world are you doing? Oh, please, Jane, don't interfere with my career. With your career? Oh, well, wait till Al gets here. You'll find out. Now, please don't interrupt. To be or not to be? That is the answer. <laughs> Look, honey, I I've asked you a hundred times, what is this all about? Well, I can't tell you, Jen. You'll find out when Al gets here. What's Al got to do with it? Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Jane, did you hear the news? Uh, just break it to me gently. Jane, chicken is going on the stage. Oh, the two of you are crazy. Don't be a skeptic, Jane. I tell you, this girl is a natural. There's no telling where the two of us can go. <laughs> I've got an idea. <laughs> what is this all about, Irma? Uh, don't talk to me, Jane. Talk to my manager. Your manager? Yes, Al let me sign a contract with him last night. A contract with Al? Yes, Jane, it's perfectly legal. It's uh, one of those regular contracts that show people have. I get 10% of everything I make. What? <laughs> Just a minute, just a minute, kids. Let me get this straight. You mean that Irma is really going on the stage? That's right. Yeah, but what about her job? She's quitting it. Yes, Jane, you know how I hate that job. Now, Irma Peterson, you'll do no such thing. Listen here, Al. Irma is not going to leave her job until she has one to take its place. Well, she's got another job. I told you she's on the stage. Doing what? Oh, you'll see. Well, Irma, what can you do? Can, can, can you sing? No. Can you dance? No. Talk? No. Al, I demand to know what she's going to do. Uh, she's going to do uh, uh, bit parts. Yes, in two bits. Quiet. <laughs> oh, Al, let me tell her. No, as your manager, I refuse. And as Irma's roommate, I insist on knowing. Now, look here, Jane. Irma is making her debut tonight. If you want to see her, we'll tell you the time and place, but not until we're ready. Now, if you promise not to interrupt... Chicken and I have business to discuss. Oh, by all means, Mr. Ziegfeld. <laughs> now, first of all, Chicken, Irma Peterson is not a stage name. You've got to have something catchy, uh, glamorous. I always like bubbles. <laughs> no, something with more class. Now, let's see. There was uh, Sarah Bernhardt. Maybe we could switch it around. Yeah, yeah, make it Irma Hartburn. Very descriptive. <laughs> Never mind the cracks, Jane. Would like to get something uh, continental, uh, Parisian. You got a French dictionary, chicken? All I have is a bottle of perfume. Yeah, well, let me see it. Uh, here, manager. Yeah. Eau de Cologne. Hey, that's kind of classy. Yeah, sure, and then no one could say the act smells. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you call yourself um, hors d'oeuvres? Hors d'oeuvres? Yeah, and then they couldn't say you're from hunger. <laughs> Oh, I, I just can't be a part of this any longer. I'm going out to meet Richard. Uh, Jane, are you coming to my debut? Look, honey, I don't know what you and your, your so-called manager are up to, but if you want to make a spectacle of yourself, now don't ask me to have any part of it. Goodbye, kid. Boy, what an envious dame. Al, I think we should have told her what I'm doing. No, chicken, she'd only laugh at you. She wouldn't see that this is just a stepping stone to bigger things. <laughs> me again, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Irma, darling, I hear you've got a job with the great Cardoni. He's going to saw you in half. Oh, Professor, I'm so excited. I, I know it's only the beginning, as Al says, but I think the main thing is just to get, well, getting started in show business. Well, Irma, if you've got theatrical ambitions, all I can say is good luck to you, my darling. I hope you kill them at both ends. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of my protege, thanks, Professor. Maybe you can help us. We're, we're trying to find a theatrical name for Irma. Well, there are millions, but my favorite is Tamara. Tamara? That yeah, don't sound bad. Oh, it's got great exploitation possibilities, Al. Can't you just hear them saying, ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you Tamara. <laughs> yes, but what will we do the next day? Uh, <laughs> no, Professor, uh, ain't got enough sock. Sock. I got it. Take an actor with a lot of punch, Pat O'Brien. Then we take a great dramatic actress, Margaret Sullivan. We got it, Margaret O'Brien. 
No, it didn't come authorized. <laughs> Look, Chicken, we can find a name later. The main thing is for you to make a big hit tonight. Well, I'll try, Yeah, Al. just a second. Got to make sure we get applause. Only one man who can help us. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. Al, got a problem. Look, Joe, Irma's going into show business. What? Huh? No, not a sideshow, regular show. <laughs> Want you to bring the boys to the Bijou Theater and applaud for her. Huh? You can't get out tonight. Or you got a letter from your most trusted son? Oh, yeah, I remember. They made him a trustee, yeah. <laughs> hey, what do you mean it's a rank and file letter? Oh, the food is rank, and he wants you to send him a file. <laughs> I see, Joe. We'll, we'll try another angle. Goodbye. Joe can't be there to see you, Irma. He has to stay home and bake a cake. Oh, Al, I'm so nervous. Ah, don't be nervous, honey. Come on, we'll start for the theater. I'm hitching my wagon to you, chicken. No, Al, I'm too tired. Let's just take a trolley. <laughs> Well, Jane, I thought you'd never get here. Oh, the traffic was terrible, Richard. Did you get the theater ticket? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Now, we have a choice of three. There's Finian's Rainbow, mm -hmm. A Streetcar Named Desire, and Brigadoon. Now, which would you prefer? Jane, uh... Well, Jane, what's the matter, honey? Oh, it's ridiculous. It's just too silly to talk about, Richard. I... I see. What about Irma? <laughs> you guessed it. She's appearing on the stage somewhere tonight. Al wouldn't tell me where. On the stage? Does Irma have talent? Talent? Richard, all I can tell you about Irma's talent is that I once heard her sing There's an Awful Lot of Coffee in Brazil and it kept me awake for nights. <laughs> well, uh, then what's she doing on the stage? I don't know, Richard, and that's, that's what frightens me. And, you know, I, I kind of feel a sense of guilt. You, you know, I've always been near her when she needed me, and I got a feeling tonight it's going to be double in spades. But, Jane, if you don't know where she's appearing, you can't do anything about it. Well, I, I could call Professor Kropotkin. He'd know. But why should I? Do you think I'm fool enough to waste an evening in some broken-down theater? Do you think I'm going to sit by and watch Irma Peterson make a fool out of herself? Do you think I'd do a thing like that why I'd be out of my mind? Well, here I am, out of my mind, at the Bijou Theater. Oh, how can I describe this place? You know they say that vaudeville is dead? That's true, this must be the graveyard. <laughs> Richard and I feel kind of silly. Richard, bless his heart, he thinks it's an opening night and he insisted upon being chivalrous. He has a bouquet of flowers in his hand. In this respect, he's a little different from the rest of the audience. They're all carrying vegetables. <laughs> I still don't know what Irma's going to do tonight. And the last act is now going on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Cardoni. <laughs> thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For my first trick, I will saw this beautiful blonde woman in half. Oh, Mother, it's Irma. <laughs> Take it easy, Jane. You're biting my flowers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Many people think that in doing my famous sawing trick, I do not use a real live person. I give you my word that this young lady is not a dummy. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Now to saw this lady in half. Well, if I ever become a grandmother, this is one story I must never tell my grandchildren. Because they think their old granny is hitting the bottle. So help me, it's happening right before my unbelieving eyes. Irma is stretched out in a big black box. Her head is sticking out of one end, her feet out of the other. Now the great Cardoni is sawing her. Irma is blowing kisses at the audience with her head. <laughs> now she's looking at her feet. She wants to see how the other half lives. <laughs> Al, the good manager that he is, is standing proudly in the wings with two bathrobes for Irma. <laughs> One regular length and the other short <laughs> Just in case the trick doesn't work Probably doesn't want her to catch a cold Cardoni saws on Now Irma is giggling Saw must be tickling her 
Cardoni is glaring at her, and I have a strange feeling that if she doesn't stop giggling, Cardoni is going to forget his artistic integrity and really go to work on her. Now the trick is finished. Irma is in two parts. The great Cardoni is standing center stage with the saw poised over his head. He speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, for all practical purposes, this woman is sawed in half. She cannot breathe. She cannot move. She cannot speak. That's right, folks. <laughs> and if that isn't enough to ruin Cardoni's act, Irma has stepped out of the box to take a bow. <laughs> Although I have never seen Cardoni's act before, I'm sure this is a new finish tonight because he has completely forgotten the audience and is chasing Irma around the stage with the saw. Come on, Richard. Come on, one Irma Peterson is enough. Two would be a little tough to take. Here, Jane, we can get backstage this way. All right. Just a second, lady. Get out of my way. Get out, get out. We're friends of the, of the star. Irma? Irma Peterson. Oh, hello, Jane. How could you do this? Don't yell at me, Jane. I'm so unhappy. I was fired. Well, I didn't think that guy was chasing you with a saw to give you a raise. <laughs> oh, I know what you're thinking, Jane, but I, I was so tired of my job, and this looked like such a good way to start, and Al thought Now, that... listen to me, Irma Peterson. You are going home, and you are going to write in your book, I am going to remain a stenographer 500 times. In shorthand? Yes. Oh, Jane, what's the good of that? You know I won't be able to read it back. <laughs> the other day, I happened to see Irma unwrap a bar of swan soap and lay it in the tub, and then she turned the water on and walked away. Well, naturally, I was curious, and I said... Honey, why are you wasting our swan soap? And Irma said, I'm not wasting it. A swan likes to shower as well as we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, confidentially, Irma, there's nothing that a cake of swan likes better than to wash your dishes shining bright. And ladies, float a cake of swan in your dishpan next time. Quick as a flash, you can whip up billows of swan's famous new kind of suds. Extra thick, extra rich suds that whisk away grease and dirt fast. And thanks to Swan's exclusive super creamed blend, Swan's new kind of suds rinse away so completely with one quick hot rinse that you don't need to dry your dishes. Yes, Swan's wonderful new kind of suds get you out of the kitchen quicker. But that's not all. Your hands are left smooth, lovely as ever, because Swan's super creamed blend protects them all through your dishwashing job. Yes, Swan's exclusive super creamed blend gives you a new kind of suds for the two things you like best for dishwashing speed, and mildness. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every single drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Fry. Cakes are light and high. Fry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Reliance Spry. You bet there's a reason why Spry is the cake making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the sure Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver secret. For new cake making success, rely on Spry. Pure all vegetable Spry with cake improver. Reliance Pride, S P R Y. Reliance Pride. Tune in again to my friend Irma next Monday evening at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Uh -huh.